In this video, we're going to go ahead and practice working with decimals with all different operations. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is make sure when we're adding or subtracting decimals, we need to make sure we line up the decimals. Now, it's, this number is nice because we see exactly where the decimal is. For the number 43, I don't see one at all. So where should they go? Okay, well, I heard from a different teacher. The way that they explain it is, you put the decimal at the very end, the same way you would put a period at the end of a sentence. So I'm going to go ahead and give that as a tip for you as well. So here, I noticed that the 40, for 43, the decimal belongs at the end. Again, just like in a sentence, the period belongs at the end of a sentence. Now once I write that there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I line up my decimal. So here, lining up that decimal, 52 goes before it, and then the 8 goes after. Now I can add. I notice there's nothing here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put 0 as a placeholder. So 0 plus h is h, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 5 is 9, and just please make sure you bring down that decimal. So my answer is 95 and 8 tenths. Okay, so the tricky part is remembering, hey, when we're adding or subtracting, line up that decimal. And second, with whole numbers, we need to make sure that we are putting the decimal in the right spot. And again, it belongs at the end of the number, just like the period belongs at the end of a sentence. Okay, let's try one with subtraction. Okay, so remember again, with subtraction as well as addition, we need to make sure we line up the decimal. Here, I don't know where the decimal is, so again, hopefully you're reminding yourself the decimal belongs at the and just like the period belongs at the end of a sentence, so does the decimal with the whole number. So we're going to write 83 like so, lining, um, putting the decimal there. I'm going to go ahead and line up the decimal for the second one, which is 62.04. And I'm going to subtract. There's no numbers here, so we're going to put 0 as a placeholder. Here you can't do 0 minus 4, so we're going to change that to a 10. We can't borrow from a zero, so we're going to go to the next number. So this turns into a two, and this turns into a nine. One way I like to think of it as is, I can't borrow from zero, so instead I'm going to borrow from 30. If I take one away from 30, I'm left with 29. So that's one way of thinking of it as well. So 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus nothing is 9. 2 minus 2 is 0. And then 8 minus 6 is 2. So my answer is 20 and 96 hundredths. So again, please make sure when you're adding or subtracting decimals, you need to make sure you line up your decimals. It's very important. Okay, next example. Now we're moving on to multiplication. So with multiplication, you don't have to line things up. Simply write the numbers out, 53 times 9 and 1 tenths. You're just going to multiply like you normally would. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 5 is 5, 9 times 3 is 27, 9 times 5 is 45, plus 2 is 47. Now we're just going to add uh, 5 plus 3, sorry, not 5, 3 plus 0 is 3, 5 plus 7 is 12, carry the 1. This gives me 8, and then bring down that 4. Now the most important part is to remember to count how many decimal places there were. I don't see any 53, but I do see one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and count one. So my answer is going to be 482 and 3 tenths. Please make sure, again, that for, you understand you don't have to line up the decimals for this one. Okay, for the last one, which can be a little bit tricky. Here, what you're going to do is to first remember the first number with division is always the number that goes inside. So I'm going to put 1,530 divided by 17 hundredths. Now, one thing you have to be very careful about is making sure that you are dividing by a whole number. And the only way to do that is to move your decimal 2 to the right. But guess what? If you move to the decimal 2 to the right on the outside, you're going to have to do the same to the inside. Two on the outside, two on the inside. I don't see a decimal anywhere. It is a whole number, so again, we remember that the decimal belongs at the end of the whole number, just like a period belongs at the end of a sentence. 
So since I moved it two to the right, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a zero as a placeholder, and I'm going to start dividing. Can 17 go into 1? No. Can 17 go into 15? No. Notice I'm putting numbers above, sorry, not numbers, x is above the number. That tells me it cannot go into it. Now, with division, especially with decimals, the placement of your numbers do matter. You can't just put it anywhere above this line. It has to go directly on top of the last digit that it's going into. So here, can 15 go into 153? The answer is yes, so I'm going to be putting the number on top of 3. Now here's the thing. I don't know multiples of 17, so what I could do is round. I can say 17 is pretty close to 20. Now why is 20 nice? Well, I know multiples of 20. 20 times 1 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is 60. 20 times 4 is 40, etc. So this makes it a lot easier for me to estimate a good number that I can try out. So for example, we're estimating this to be around 20. How many times do you think 20 will go into 153? Okay, so you're probably thinking it's either going to be 7, because that's going to be about 140, or 8, which is around 160. Well, let's think. What's closer, 140 or 160? I think 160 is a lot closer, so for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and try and multiply it by 8. So 17 times 8, that's going to be 56. Uh, 1 times 8 is 8, plus 5 is 13. Now, it doesn't seem like it's enough. It seems like I can go one more extra, so I'm just, to make things simple, I'm just going to add an additional 17, okay, which is going to give me, look, Perfect, 153. So instead of multi multiplying by 8, I'm going to multiply by a 9. And notice the 9 goes right above the 3, so it does go in perfectly. I have a remainder of 0. I'm going to bring down a 0. I'm not done because there's a bunch of zeros I need to bring down, so please continue. So here I'm going to say 17 goes into 0, zero times, subtract, bring down a 0. Okay, I keep going. Here, 17 goes into 0, 0 times, with the remainder of 0. Bring down that last 0. How many times does 17 go into 0? Zero? 0. And notice, I can stop now because there's no more numbers to drop down. So my final answer is going to be 9,000.